Thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is David Harris. I'm the managing director of the Charles Hamilton Houston Institute for Race and Justice. As you know, we've been doing these forums for almost a decade, and before that, Professor Ogletree was doing them with uh, Professor Gates. I'm sorry to say to you, as you probably know, Professor Ogletree is not going to be with us today. Uh, it, it is, in fact, his 40th wedding anniversary, and his children uh, arranged for a, a wonderful cruise for him and Pam that just happened to be this week, the only week they could do it. So he sends his regrets and apologies, but also his welcome. Uh, I'd like to begin by offering some thanks to people who really uh, helped us make this happen. It's always uh, uh, a, a challenge for us, and it, it really means a great deal to us to have the kind of support we have. Uh, these people are listed in your program, but I'd like to call them out by name now. <clears throat> Clemmie and Jim Cash, John and Leslie Christian, Barbara Edlin, Vernon Jordan and his wife, and belated happy birthday, uh, uh, Lewis and Ginger Sullivan, Stephanie Phillips and George Murray, Constance and Preston Williams, and Carol Fulp. Thanks as well to Wendell Taylor from the Wilmer Hale Law Firm, uh, which has supported us uh, throughout our uh, uh, existence and uh, actually contributed to today's forum as well, and we're very thankful. I also want to thank Dean Minow, Martha Minow of the Harvard Law School, who also has been extremely supportive of our work and encourages us and uh, shares our commitment to race and justice. So I want to give us a few other uh, uh, notes of appreciation. First to Ethan Thomas, who does all the design work o over the years, and for all of you who have appreciated that work, you will know just how great he is. He works tirelessly, and those of you who know anything about us know how late we are to deadlines, and he always manages to get things done. Uh, on the island, I want to thank, give a special thanks to uh, Caroline Hunter and Lori Henry. And um, that's right. That's right. right. You know, as you know, and the polar bears and the NAACP, and again, they have been with us. Uh, they, they have been with us throughout uh, our tenure and, and really add a, a really special dimension to, to, to what we do, and we are deeply appreciative. Uh, and, of course, the other on-islander is Barbara Edlin. Uh, and as you know, Barbara makes things happen in ways that are spectacular and wonderful and uh, really creates an environment that's good for the guests, the panelists, and the audience. And we're deeply indebted to her, not only for the work that she does, but for the support that she gives us and for believing in us and what we do. Uh, it really contributes a great deal uh, in some of our darker moments. So, and I have to say, to any of you sitting in this room, especially to the panelists uh, and the donors, uh, really, I'm standing up here, but all thanks and praise goes to Kelly Garvin and Ernest Owens, who really make this happen. Uh, they are out there, and uh, Kelly, at least, is not going to raise her hand, and Ernest is up there somewhere in the lights. Uh, so, Finally, uh, I'd like to give thanks to a couple of other people. Uh, Derek Northington, uh, who works directly with Professor Oltree, but also uh, helps support us at the Houston Institute and is up with Ernest, and uh, really uh, is the backbone of Professor Oltree's office, which helps us keep going as well. Jody Silver and Alan Freeman, the uh, uh, videographers who have uh, been with us now for many years, and of course, the inestimable Lolita Parker, Jr., our photographer of great merit. So finally, I'd like to extend, and I'm sorry, Charlie Esposito, uh, who is also, there he is, uh, working, toiling away uh, in the middle of uh, a very busy season here at the high school, uh, doing all of the technical, making all the technical pieces work for us. Thank you, Charlie, for everything. So finally, I, I want to give a special thanks to uh, BET. Uh, uh, BET has been supported the Houston Institute for many years in many ways, uh, really most often with financial support, and that's been deeply appreciated. 
Uh, this year, we've taken that relationship to a, a, an even higher level, and we've created uh, a very important partnership with them, and they've uh, produced a number of uh, videos that we're going to use and incorporate here, and I, I think you're going to be very impressed and pleased with them, and we look forward to this partnership growing over the years. So, we often gather here, and people come and uh, enjoy this, and uh, really have very little sense of what we do. And I think one thing we're going to do this year is to try to talk a little bit about that. I want to begin by saying on September 3rd is the 120th anniversary of the birth of Charles Hamilton Houston, for whom our institute is named, and uh, in whose name we do our work. <clears throat> This year's program is more directly aligned to the work we're doing than they have been in the past. And you see on your seats a couple of uh, opinion pieces that we've produced uh, over the past year. And uh, we have another one that uh, Johanna Wald has in Commonwealth Magazine now that give you a sense of where we are. Uh, we must acknowledge at this point also the Ford Foundation for its ongoing support of our work uh, in general. And uh, we want to give them thanks. Several years ago, as part of our death penalty work, we created an approach to race and justice that we call community justice. It was based on the simple th fact that we as a nation were becoming increasingly aware of the costs of the death penalty, most often used in cases involving white victims, while entire communities of color were continuously and seriously under-resourced and actively underdeveloped. It led us to ask, what kind of society makes such choices? The answers are varied, and I think we'll hear a little bit about that today. But one thing was clear. The wishes, aspirations, knowledge, and resources of communities of color were not being included in these policy debates. Community justice simply calls for the voices of the people and communities affected by public policies to play an active role in creating and implementing them. We have done this work here in Massachusetts and a couple of other settings. But events of the last year seem to us to have catapulted community justice, known by many different names, into the forefront of public policy considerations. More recently, we decided to launch the Houston Marshall Plan, described briefly in the work that you have. Named for Charles Hamilton Houston and Thurgood Marshall, it actually borrows from the logic of the Marshall Plan, uh, which was used to rebuild Europe following World War II. Our position is that the 50 years of the war on crime and the war on drugs fought largely in communities of color have ravaged and underdeveloped our communities as surely as any other kind of military operation did in Europe. We have heard many times recently how the police represent an occupying force in our communities, and it is certainly true if one lives on the heel, under the heel of that kind of policing used to fight these wars. Our project is designed to activate community justice on a national scale. The original Marshall Plan was highly localized, with funds going directly to affected areas for rebuilding. It was enhanced by other kinds of structural reforms, and in this sense, we believe the momentum being created to dismantle mass incarceration is just such a necessary but not sufficient start. We continue to work on dismantling that system, but also recognize the urgency of identifying the specific costs of these wars and crafting solutions designed to combat their effects. We do this in the knowledge that effective efforts taking place in communities across the country serve as models to be shared and, and brought to scale, and our goal is to make sure that we all have access to that wealth of knowledge. I won't belabor this, but hope it provides some insight into what we do and who we are at the Houston Institute, aside from coming here on the third Wednesday of August every year. I urge you to visit our website, charleshamiltonhouston.org, and register to receive our email blasts. We will be issuing one this fall, announcing the launch of our interactive website devoted to the Houston Marshall Plan. While you are there, you should feel free to visit the giving page and make a donation. Uh, despite all the support from the law school, we must raise all of our funds, and adding you to the list of donors we, I mentioned earlier will help us immensely. In a moment, it'll be, it's my pleasure uh, to introduce Martha Vineyard, Martha's Vineyard's own Michelle Holland, uh, acclaimed and uh, widely known uh, jazz and R&B artist, and Frank Williams, uh, also a highly acclaimed musician from Boston. Before I do that, I'd like to ask us to take a moment to remember the passing of somebody I consider to be a giant 
and a, a true lion of our movement, Julian Bond. So could we take a moment and reflect on him? So we'll never be able to replace what he has given us, but I hope we all carry something of him within us.